what's up YouTube um, in this tutorial this is what we'll be creating this animation here so I'm basically rolling a torus into the snow and it's leaving a permanent trail behind itself and uh, this is done quite easily with the collision deformer so I'm just going to basically create the scene from scratch and there's a few other things I'm going to look into like uh, rotating the wheel automatically based on distance using Expresso and a um, kind of texture uh, material tutorial for the snow and some other things so I'm just gonna start this scene from scratch firstly I'm gonna create the terrain so I'm just gonna use a plane object here and I'm just gonna make it I'm gonna add a few more segments so maybe uh, 60 segments each way I'm then gonna select the plane and make it editable and I'm just gonna go into a uh, line mode so next I'm gonna use the uh, displacer modifier which is quite handy so I'm just going to place that below the plane go to displacer go to the shading section and then use a noise map which basically distorts the me mesh depending on this noise map here um, so we can create like a terrain pretty easily and uh, there's different types of noises I'm just going to have a look Luca's quite harsh I want to create like a snow terrain, so quite soft. That looks about right. Um, I might increase the scale like that, just make it a bit softer. And yeah, so that's quite a soft kind of look. Next, I'm just going to create a torus. Flip it along plus Z. I'm just going to scale that down because it's massive. I'm just going to move that up. It's about there. Scale it down slightly. Put that there. Now I'm going to start rolling this outside of the terrain. So um, yeah, we want to animate along X. I'm just going to put a keyframe there and then go to maybe frame 50 and place a keyframe about here. Now the rotation I'm going to do with Expresso. So just click the torus and add a Expresso tag. And um, I'm just going to drag and drop the torus and I'm actually gonna drop it in again and select in the blue section the input I'm gonna select global rotation actually I need to check which rotation so yeah I want it to move along minus B and global rotation global rotation B and I want X position to drive this. So what have we got? We got a real and we got a real. And I don't think a direct link is gonna work. So we're gonna need some kind of adapter. And then I think the math operator might be the one we're looking for. So calculate math. And it could be degree as well. I'm not sure actually. Real output real. Yeah, it could be one of these. But actually, I might try this first. So I'm just gonna see what happens here. And uh, as you can see, 
that rotation is very high. So I might just leave that for now. Try this. Again, monitoring the B rotation. Looks like it's very high. I think it's going in the right direction. So what we can maybe do is divide this. Just divide by 20. Hmm. And now we're starting to get a much more, if I move that out of the way, we're starting to get there. It's still very fast, so I can just keep dividing more and more until I it looks like that's pr almost there. It's looking pretty good. Spinning maybe a tad too fast, so 70. Yep, that's looking all right. So the rotation's occurring automatically. We could actually make this a bit more intelligent as well. There is actually a mathematical formula uh, for exactly calculating how many rotations it should spin but for now I'm just gonna cheat and just use divide because it looks about right okay so that's good now I'm gonna add a collision modifier and I'm gonna add that after displacer because in uh, Cinema 4D the, ver, um, the order of events is quite important so first I'm going to execute this placer to create the terrain and then I'm going to execute uh, the collision modifier so I'm just going to go to the colliders tab here under collision and just drop in the torus let's just see what happens so it's kind of looking strange right now as you can see the kind of surfaces wrapping around it which is actually a pretty cool effect in itself, but it's not what we want. So I'm just going to go to collision and I'm just going to play with the settings. First I'm going to increase the steps to about 8. And then I'm going to set relax to 0. And I'm going to set stretch to 1. Sorry, I'm going to set relax to 1. And then object under object restore shape just put that to zero and this means that as you can see once the terrain's dented it just stays that way it doesn't pop back and as you can see it's kind of it's almost like a sheet it's kind of pulling in slightly and we don't want that and I believe that is the relax setting so I'm just going to set that to zero and see what happens that's better. So now it is functioning as we want it to. And uh, you could play with the settings here as well, see what, you know, it's all about experimenting. I think that's quite deep. But, um,. That pretty much does what we want. I'm just going to go through the materials quickly. So basically this is my original scene and um, the snow material I created. <laughs> Some kind of glitch going on here. Basically I managed to kind of create a different color for the insides where it's getting dented and I added like a few kind of snow crystals on it. Now I'll just run you through my material. It's very simple, just a color and a specular. The specular has a noise map. And basically you can add any noise map and then where it says low clip and high clip, make sure the low clip, the high clip is 89 and the low clip is around 82. Like So they're pretty much very high and very close together. And that kind of blacks out like most of the noise map and only like, uh, white specks remain so that's the way to do the specular and then the color is just a layer I've got some subsurface scattering but it's not actually necessary and uh, the main uh, shader is the falloff and that is just 
you choose fall off it's basically this is the gradient here it's just blue with a little little bit of white at the end which gives us this re result the subsurface scattering could be handy but um, I think well I'd have to activate um, subsurface here from GI so I'm not going to go into that right now and the checker material is quite simple you just only consists of a color channel and it's a checkerboard which you can find under uh, surfaces checkerboard and then I just used a value of 15 and 0 0.01 which makes this make turns a checker into stripes basically so those those are the two very simple materials I created for the scene but you can experiment and come up with your own materials or use presets there's a lot of them under uh, the content browser presets, prime, materials, got a whole bunch of stuff here so um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, I know it's just a quick one but um, this has a lot of applications like tank treads or you know mud kind of a car leaving mud tracks anything that leaves like an imprint